So there are a couple things that you need to know about circles for the GMAT. Uh, the first is just a simple calculation that you may remember from high school, which is uh, the area of a circle is pi r squared. And the r there represents the radius, which is from the center to one side of the circle. Now, if we had the distance all the way across the circle through the center, that would be the diameter, uh, which is two times the radius. The distance across a circle varies depending on what points you connect, so it's important that you go through the center of the circle in order to create the radius. So if you know the radius is equal to 4, for example, then the area would be pi times 4 squared, which is 16, and the answer to whatever question that would be is 16 pi or pi times 16. Pi itself is equal to about 3.14. So whenever you look at pi, don't think of it as a variable. It's an actual hard number and it's equivalent to about three. So this answer is equivalent to about three times 16, which would be about 48, but a little bit bigger just to be clear. Now circumference is equal to two pi r and the circumference is basically the perimeter of a circle. So it's the distance all the way around a circle. And whereas area is measured in square units, Circumference is just a distance, so it's not measured in square units. It would just be measured in uh, feet, for example, whereas area would be measured in square feet. So the circumference in this situation uh, with a radius of 4 would simply be 8 pi, and that would be equivalent to about 24. Now, arcs and angles are interesting, and an arc is a part of the circumference of the circle. So it's like part of the perimeter of the circle. And you can either create an arc by connecting uh, two points on the exterior to the center or two points on the exterior to a point on the opposite side of the circle. An interesting thing about this is the angle created here is going to be relative to the percent or ratio of the outside that this portion of the arc covers. So if this arc covers, um, say, one sixth of the circumference, then I know that this interior angle will cover one sixth of 360 degrees. So this would cover 60 degrees. Now the angle that's created when you take this arc and connect it to a point opposite uh, of that arc is going to be half of what it would have been if you connect it to the center. So it's going to be one half of 60 degrees, which means it's 30 degrees. So the central angle is relative to the ratio in terms of the uh, arc divided by the total circumference. That will give you uh, the ratio of the interior angle to 360 degrees. And then you divide that by two to find the exterior angle um, that would have created the same arc. So if we have, for example, a circle and let's say we have two points here and here and let's say we connected them to a point over here this point which is not all the way across the circle still follows the same rules as this angle does so it would be half of what it would be if we connected these two points here and you can see that this angle is a lot bigger than this angle it's actually it actually would be exactly twice as large if I drew it to proportion. Um, so that's an interesting fact as well. It doesn't matter where this point occurs on the outside of the circle. Um, if you connect it to two other points on the circle, it will be equal to one half of what the interior angle would have been had you connected those points to the interior.